Season 4 is finally live in Call of Duty Vanguard and in Warzone, and along with it, for Vanguard's multiplayer, we got ourselves a returning map, a very sexy returning map, may I say, from Call of Duty World War II called USS Alexis Texas 1945, and this one is going to be quite an interesting topic in this video, and then I'm also going to be covering the new UGM-8 LMG and Macro-5 SMG that you can get within the Season 4 Battle Pass, plus gameplay of the push dagger melee weapon and the only reason why I'm able to actually get gameplay of this stuff is because you can actually go into local games or into private matches essentially and use this stuff for yourself before the season even goes live which is kind of crazy to think of you've been able to do this for I think every season within Vanguard and so I'm definitely taking advantage of it because my internet sucks and I want to get these videos uploaded as soon as the season goes live so either way let's go ahead and first talk about the USS Texas 1945 map like I said already this is a remake of the USS Texas map from Call of Duty World War II and you're definitely going to notice that there is a lot of like breakable material on this map that wasn't originally there in the original World War II version also it's not just like some breakable walls added into like some I don't know head glitching spots if you want to call them that uh, but you're also going to notice that there are doors on the map and these are actually metal doors and it's kind of interesting because you can only bash through them in one direction you can't bash through them in both directions and that's because these are supposed to be like sealed type doors and so that's kind of the reason why so if you're inside the ship and you bash through to the outside then you can do that but you can't bash from the outside into the inside which I think is kind of interesting uh, also you're going to notice that there is some breakable ground that you can enter which just kind of brings you into like a smaller close quarters area or ceiling whichever way you're actually facing I suppose uh, and I do find this kind of interesting it'd be really good flank points to actually like get around enemy players who don't really expect you and that's one reason why I really like this map is I feel like there were some pretty easy flank points on the side of the ship but yet it was still a fairly smaller sized map I mean it's a I guess it's a medium sized map it is pretty long for the most part but I still felt like there was like a lot of different ways for you to flank enemy players even though this map is pretty linear for the most part uh, and so I really do appreciate that uh, but I also want to mention that at the B location there is metal doors at w as well and I find it kind of interesting they added doors in this specific location because these are metal doors and you can't actually break them like you can with most doors here within Vanguard's multiplayer and so and these like I said these doors can only be bashed through in one direction you can't bash through them on the outside uh, where B is at which I think is kind of interesting I don't know it's just, it just kind of feels different than what you normally experience in Call of Duty World War 2 it's definitely not a bad remake like might I say uh, but I will admit like introducing like I just think they went a little too overkill with the break material but I mean for the most part the map doesn't seem to play bad at least against bots anyway I'll have to see what it's like going up against real players uh, but for the most part I really do like this map I'm glad they brought back a World War II map I was wondering when they were going to start doing that uh, also I should mention that the actual boat the USS Texas ship itself is right outside Caldera the war zone map which I thought was quite interesting and so I like how there is this crossover between multiplayer and war zone appearing pretty much in both games which I think is something you don't really see too often within Call of Duty, at least within these past couple of years, since Warzone has came out, um, seeing like Warzone references in multiplayer. You see a lot of multiplayer references in Warzone, but not really the other way around. So I just think that's quite interesting. And let's go ahead and talk about the UGM-8 LMG, because this LMG is supposed to be a fast fire rate LMG, which it is, but I feel like it has a very low damage per shot, and it definitely does. And you can increase the damage of this by using the 50 or the 75 round uh, boxes uh, to increase your ammo capacity um, but it, the 50 round box anyway that which is the one you're seeing within this gameplay it actually decreases the fire rate by like I think 36 percent if I'm not mistaken and so I my experience using this gun I really decreased the fire rate a lot by increased the base damage of the gun itself and I still felt like I was getting quite a bit of hit markers uh, you're pretty much going to be getting three to like four to maybe five shots to kill uh, but I mean three if you were lucky enough getting multiple shots to the head I I suppose either way it's definitely a fast fire rate lmg i just kind of used it in a style where it's a slower fire rate but you know the damage per shot isn't that good uh, and so i can see this shredding in hardcore modes it's definitely really good at close to medium ranges but long range even though it's not like a hard gun to really control and so you could take out targets long range but i just feel like the damage drop off and just the dps just really doesn't work well with long ranges so medium to close range i've noticed is where the, this gun really does shine and 
and that could also be a good competitor with the other weapon that got added within season four which is the macro 5 smg and you already know that this is a very unique smg because you can akimbo them or dual wield them this is the first time we've seen this happen with smgs in quite a long time i can't remember the last time you can like dual wield smgs like we've seen dual wielding pistols of course but dual wielding smgs we haven't really seen that too frequently within the call of duty series and so i really like them honestly i mean like i've said already and what you're seeing within the gameplay i've only used them against bots so i have no idea how well this will really go against actual skilled players out there but the accuracy for the hip fire on this thing even by default with like just using one of the macro fives it's really good and the fire rate isn't overly crazy i'm pretty sure there's smgs that have like a lot faster fire rates than this gun but the i just can't i just it's so amazing how good the accuracy actually is at hip fire i don't feel like it's that tight i feel like the hip fire could be a little bit tighter however the accuracy of the hip fire spread is really good and so therefore you're really not going to be missing any of your shots as long as your enemies are in your crosshairs uh but the akimbo is like pretty much all the way to go obviously you're not gonna be able to take people out on long range using akimbo uh but i have picked up a single version of this off the ground i've never made a class using just a single macro five yet i've only picked it up off the ground through like bots that i've killed and the recoil doesn't seem too bad on it i mean i have no idea what attachments were on the macro five when i picked it up but the recoil did not seem that bad at all and i was a little bit impressed that it wasn't as high as i thought it would and also i thought the iron sights looked really good the default iron sights on the macro five are pretty amazing and i think we're a little spoiled having like 10 attachments on our gun because i'm pretty sure almost every single one of us just use the actual optics and never really stick with iron sights and so i give the macro five credit on the iron sights i really think that's awesome but definitely a key in them or dual wielding them is the way to go it is so much fun and i'm gonna have a blast doing that i'll probably make a video on the future uh showcasing this these akimbo macro 5 smgs and it's gonna be really fun to actually run around with those the last thing i wanted to show off in this video is the push dagger melee weapon i believe you have to complete an in-game challenge in order to unlock this thing i don't think it's in the battle pass whatsoever but the push dagger is you know it's a melee weapon honestly it's not really too much different from the combat knife unfortunately like this is something that you can't actually throw like you can with the axe and so the push dagger I mean it's pretty small I mean you really you're just poking people or pushing them rather to kill them and I just think that's kind of funny knowing that's how you're taking out enemies uh, but it's really not that impressive there's really no range to it whatsoever uh, it's a dagger for goodness sakes uh, and so there really isn't too much uniqueness about this compared to just the normal combat knife we have by default in this game uh, but for those of you who do love to run around with melee weapons I think this is a good incentive for uh, you guys to use that and of course unlock gold on it and eventually atomic camo which looked pretty good when I was looking at it through the in-game menu uh, but nonetheless it's a melee weapon I'm not a huge fan of them I run around melee like once in a while but not really my uh, thing when it comes to playing Call of Duty so either way that's it for the video guys I hope you enjoyed it make sure you are subscribed to the channel for more season 4 content I'll probably be covering Warzone in my next video because I want to start getting into that more and of course we have the new fortunes keep map to actually experience so i'm really curious how that's actually going to play out so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that video and of course like this video if you did enjoy it and i shall catch you guys later